Leave Better with Christine is brought to you in part by Gowling WLG. A law firm can do more than simply provide legal services. It can help support a community and its clients by bringing them together. On this episode, we're going to talk about risk, taking it, and how to keep going for it. Recently, I had a chance to catch up with personal finance expert and author Kelly Keane at her Toronto office, and I'm excited to share our chat with you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm here with Kelly Keane today, who's the author of Talk Money to Me. So, um, Kelly, thank you so much for being here oh, with me today. It's just my absolute pleasure to be with you, Christine. So, you know, you're so inspiring. I've learned so much from you. Um, you know, we've worked together before, and I listen to you speak, and I watch your videos on LinkedIn. Please watch her videos. They're amazing. Lots of great financial advice. Um, so, one to watch, one to follow. But I also want to talk to you about something else that I've heard you speak about, and that's risk. Yeah. And that kind of ties in from financial management as well. But um, why are women, do you think, maybe more than men, so afraid to take risks? And I don't, is it just risk with money or is it risk in general? Okay, now we're painting with broad strokes here. Yes, so please that's true. Uh, yes. don't send us angry tweets. But I think there's a number of reasons um, that a lot of women struggle with risk. Number one, if you think about our evolution, it's mm -hmm. really not been that long that women have been able to earn money, um, mm -hmm. invest money, uh, not have to have a spouse to uh, buy a home. I would not, I, like there's no way if I was born just a few decades ago, would I be sitting here talking about money, have the career that I have. Yeah. So absolutely, I think we're just newer in our evolution. Mm -hmm. I think that women also, when they look at their finances, are more holistic, yeah. um, right? We're not taught to kind of uh, gamble as much. Yeah. I'm not saying that, that, that people don't. And then when it comes to our career, mm -hmm. absolutely. Like, think about it. We don't ask for the dates. We don't, again, uh, there's a lot, the, the, you know, younger generations are changing this, which is fantastic. Yes, great, yeah. Uh, fantastic. But even like uh, like like watching parents with young kids, right? Mm -hmm. The dads will, will push more than the moms will. Right, right. Uh, just even watching that kind of human nature. And a book that I love called Women Don't Ask, the mm -hmm. authors uh, estimate that by a woman not negotiating her starting salary mm -hmm. and not negotiating subsequent salary, she stands to lose a million dollars, leave a million That's dollars crazy. on the table during her working lifetime. Guys are four times more likely to negotiate their salary. And they actually, um, when they're asked about negotiating, they say it's like a challenge. And women say it's like going to the dentist. Yeah. It's, it's funny. We did a recent episode on negotiations. Okay. And women um, were less likely to negotiate on behalf of themselves. They were great on behalf exactly. of other people, but not on behalf of themselves. And, and it, you know, it impedes into many different elements of your life. So thinking about risk and thinking about your career, you've got yeah. an amazing story. Um, wh where do you think you've taken some risks that have really worked out for you? Oh my gosh, almost every day. <laughs> like really almost every day. And, and I really was a shy person. I was mm -hmm. not a confident person. Um, I, I studied what I wanted to become yeah. oh, and, okay. and the nuance, right? Mm -hmm. So I tried to have friends or get around people or be at events and really study what is it that these people do? What is the air about them? How do they have that confidence? Because uh, you know, and even one example was Simon Cowell, like when he, before he did American Idol, still incredibly famous and successful and I remember a story about him like camping outside the door of the guy that he wanted to do or it was either camping outside or annoying the heck out of him or whatever but I was like wow even when you're at the top or near the top you still have to take more risks than people realize they and you still gotta that, hustle yeah they think that you're just handed everything and that mm -hmm. is so not the case so surround yourself with people that are really stretching you mm -hmm. and calling you out on you being able to do more because like you said with the negotiation we'll do that for a girlfriend yeah right so you need to make sure you're around people too that can go no you could be doing so much more you're playing small and how do you recognize like when you need to take a risk like like you've got a situation where um you know you've got two options one's a safe route you're, it's comfortable it's easy the other one is the risky how do you push yourself to do that to, to go for that harder option where you don't really know what the outcome's going to be or yeah. it's more uncertain 
And the tough part about that is women much more so, painting again in broad strokes, yep. but women much more so than men. When we do push ourselves and go into that really uncomfortable situation, we have to be super careful about that self-talk. About yeah. All of a sudden I hear from women that imposter syndrome, right? Like mm-hmm. they want to actually push themselves, but then when they get there, they almost sabotage themselves in a way. So what's worked for me is having very strategic coaches in my life yes. at certain times that it's not a girlfriend advice, it's not a mentor advice. This is an impartial person that can help me evaluate, number one, is that a, a, a realistic risk to take? Yep. Um, you know, number two, am I, am I playing it safe or, or you know, do you yep. need to take it yep. further? Um, I, I can't speak highly enough about using coaches at times, not just a mentor, somebody that you're paying money to to be there for you. Right. And, and how do you like stomach those, like the pivots in your life? Because I mean, you've gone through different, well, I think your career has generally been in touch with like the financial industry, but you've pivoted between, you know, working for a company, working for yourself. Like, oh, yes. Yeah. How, how's that kind of risk played in um, to, to those moves? Yeah. And then paying your dues. Mm-hmm. Because if, if you subscribe to Malcolm Gladwell's and whoever he, you know, got the research for the 10,000 hour rule, right? Yeah. All of a sudden you're in finance, but like you, now you're doing TV and you don't have your 10,000 hours. And, True. <laughs> and then you're right. So even though I've been in the financial industry for my entire career, mm-hmm. there's, you know, writing books and things of that. Yeah. So it's getting very comfortable with being uncomfortable. Einstein's definition of insanity being that doing the same thing over and over again, expecting right. a different result. But yet we don't unpack that. We don't unpack that, that we do want something different. But then if we unpacked it and realized that that doing of something different means incredible uncomfortableness, it means maybe upsetting our tribe. It means um, yeah. shaking things up because as soon as you're doing something different, then your tribe is like, hey, what are you doing? You're not the same Christine anymore. Like, you know, and now you have, and you're like, hey, this is really hard, uh, and my tribe isn't supporting me. So yeah. be prepared. That's where I was saying, too, that constant coach or mentors or whatever in yeah. your life, you have to get really still with yourself and get to know yourself as a woman uh, to take that on. Because since I've met you, I've seen your career like continue to evolve and like Kelly 2.0 and 3.0, and, 4, and you just keep keep going up and shaking things up. And um, like you. It's, it's, well, <laughs> thank you. It's amazing. Like, I, I just love uh, your content, but. Yeah, like that's got to be really challenging and to continue to push yourself and know to not to stay stagnant, right? And to like constantly shake up where you're giving your content or who you're working with. And I just, I think that's so admirable. Thank you. But how do you, like within you, how do you push yourself to keep going for things? Like I think that's really a unique skill. Well, and I, I, I'm not even going for things per se. So it's kind of like a snowball. You know, when you're starting out, you're like begging someone to meet with you and you have no yes. contact. Yes. You're networking yes. and it's like, <laughs> and you're like, is this ever going to work out? And then it snowballs. And I got to tell you that I just wake up having so much fun mm-hmm. um, that it's not even like a goal or, or, I mean, I'm pushing myself, but it's really just because there's so much on the table that I can do now because of the really, really hard work I did 20 years ago, right. the planting of seeds that I had no idea would sprout, right? Yeah. That person that you had a coffee with that was just your equal, now is like the boss of a company or the head of that company that then could hire you for someone else. So I think also realizing the power in connection yeah. and keeping connected to people, not just through social media, but having coffee with them, having a conversation so and yeah. being generous with what can you give them as opposed to what can you do for me? Yeah. Um, and especially when you're struggling to do something for someone else when you really need a favor yes, from them. Yes, it's yes, It's not easy, <laughs> but boy, people, the reciprocity rule, yeah. people really viscerally remember that. And I mean, I love all this and I'm kind of in that beginning stages and, and trying to, to build alongside many others at my level of my career. How, how do you do it when you know, you've got lots of ideas You've got a vision, you're very passionate about something, you're building, 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 and then people start knocking you down. And maybe they're people that are close to you or it's unexpected. How do you kind of recover and pick yourself up like any words of wisdom on that and you've done an amazing job with your career you're not just starting you're oh, you're you, doing Kelly. awesome and and the more you put yourself out there yeah um, this is why there's so few women in politics this is why it's tough to be a woman on TV mm-hmm. um, you are going and with social media it's easier to criticize right it's yeah. a lot easier to burn a house down yep. than it is to build it yeah this is you really getting to know who you are um, and uh, having a very strong support network 
um, really like just I mean, at the end of the day, like who cares? Like who cares? I like, love if, that. If you like, I just my coach gave me that. He was like, so who cares? Like if at the end of the and and by uh, by the way, most of the time we're so critical. Women are so critical with themselves. That's true. It's not yeah. even. The people trying to pull us down, it's it's us pulling ourselves down. Well, I love this. Thank you so much. This is great advice. Hopefully, it's very oh, it's always inspirational for me. I hope it is for those watching. And uh, thanks so much, Kelly. Looking forward to doing this again sometime. Thank you, Christine, of course. Emergency alerts of life-threatening events help keep us safe. That's why governments and broadcasters have come together to bring more alerts to more Canadians faster. Introducing Alert Ready, Canada's new emergency alert system. When an alert is broadcast, it's time to act. Learn more at alertready.ca. Hi, I'm Laura Babcock, host of The O Show here on Cable 14. And during this pandemic, while we're all staying home, staying safe and practicing social distancing, we're still going to talk to the Hamiltonians who are making news. We'll keep having those same great discussions on important topics that matter to you. The only difference is the platform that we're shooting it on. So please stay tuned, stay engaged. Get your groove on. Join the Mac Kids Walk and Wheel Mascot Dance Challenge, a virtual dance party fundraiser for McMaster Children's Hospital Foundation. Have we got a challenge for you. Between Mother's Day and Father's Day, share your new dance party video on social media. Make a donation and challenge your friends to help us raise $200,000. Support patient care today. Bust a move and start fundraising at matkids.ca slash walk and wheel. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, thanks so much uh, for you. We've got two Hamiltonians now to continue that conversation that we had uh, with Kelly Kane off site. So, here with Jessica Wooder, a director in healthcare management, and uh, Sarah Wright, who is um, a social worker uh, in, in Hamilton. So, thank you so much for being here, ladies, with me today thank to continue the conversation on risk and risk taking, which is definitely something I think we're all very familiar with. And uh, we thought we'd just jump right in and talk through a couple situations, throwing it over to you, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, so I think a situation that all of us can relate to and many 30-something, 40-something uh, working professionals can relate to is the risk of going back to school. Mm. Um, I think, you know, when you're in your 30s, when you're in your 40s, you may be more established than you were in your youth or in your 20s, um, but you have a lot more responsibilities, yeah. right? Yeah. And so um, going back to school... Um, can seem pretty daunting for people our age, right? Yeah, no, absolutely, definitely. I mean, I can definitely relate. Um, Jess and I, we, we did the same program and um, that I finished last year. But to, to make that decision to go back to school while you're working full time, while you have bills and you have other priorities in your life, it's a massive risk. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, like you said, I can completely relate. Uh, we went back to school, and while, while I did that, um, while I was doing the master's degree, I completely ch also at the same time changed career paths. Mm -hmm. So I was you know, originally in a role where I was not happy. Um, so when I found the right program for me, I probably took the biggest leap of faith that I ever had, and I, ch I chose to quit that job without finding a new one first. Ooh, so that was, that was risky. It was, it was <laughs> risky, but I, I did find a position, and it was an internship. So I was 26 years old. Um, so, uh, as an intern, so I had to take a number of steps back, and it, it was very overwhelming. Uh, but I think the risk really, really paid off. You know, I chose to accept that risk, mm -hmm. knowing that the outcome was somewhat within my control in this scenario because it was kind of dependent on how hard I worked, and I really, really wanted it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and even a risk like going back to school, which seems like a simple, like that's an easy thing. Of course, we all want to go back to school, continue to progress and grow our careers, professional development, all of that. For me, it was quite complicated. There was a lot of factors that I had to think through. One, how was I going to pay for it? How was I going to you know, work full time and do school full time? What programs were available? And then what, how was this going to affect my personal life? Was you know, 
you know, my friendship's going to be at risk, my family re relationships. Like, I was really, really concerned about all those things. And um, actually, I, I owe so much to the master's program. Um, it was life-changing in so many ways. So I think the, you know, no risk, no reward, it really paid off. It uh, brought a lot of things to life, like, you know, who are my real friends and who will be there to support me, um, as well as it means you prioritize because you only have so much time, right? So, um, and then, you know, the money thing, it's always an issue. Um, and, you know, we're just, I was just chatting with Kelly Keene about money and, and good decisions. But I think that when you invest in yourself, that's always a good decision. And it was really hard. I actually had to take on um, a, a, a second job. So not only was I already I working full time yes. and going to school full time, um, then I had to take on a. I don't know how I did it. I don't. I don't know. And I don't know how anybody does it because I think more and more we're getting professionals go back um, to school mm -hmm. either for it's a master's degree or maybe it's just for more of a short term professional development. Um, but when you start to take on those extra jobs, it's a lot. But mm -hmm. I don't know. We all we we do it, but the benefit is there, and I think that's the key is mm -hmm. um, knowing that with that yeah. risk is a reward, so. The more you grow, sometimes the bigger the risks are, mm -hmm. but then also comes a bigger reward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I it, think that's, you know, it was that's what happened for me anyway. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully other, I mean, there's definitely been risks in my life that have not paid out, right? Like you've, you've tried something, um, mm -hmm. I'm sure. trying a project right now at work that's a little bit risky. I don't know how it's gonna turn out and I'm really concerned because my reputation's on the line. I vouch for this idea um, and I think it's gonna be like really great and I see the benefits, but there's always those out of control factors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's risk that we're involved in um, constantly, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah, did you have any more comments about that? Um, yeah, and I think, I think it's important to know that, you know, when it comes to career, I think I think it's something like the average person has 12 to 15 careers throughout their lifetime. So I'm I'm at like four maybe. So so <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel a little bit better yeah. um, knowing that. Um, and 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 I think there's various reasons people go back to school, whether it's you know career advancement mm -hmm. um, or whether it's a change in field. So yeah. um, you know obviously it's scarier to go back to school when it's a change of field because yeah. you're a little uncertain versus career advancement. Yeah. Um, but definitely um, something I've been thinking about and, and I'm lucky to work at an agency where they do support career advancement mm -hmm. and there are you know grants and benefits and things like that that they offer to um, 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 they offer to staff who do want to advance in their career. Yeah, no, and I, it, having you know a workplace or those supportive systems around you um, is, is definitely a big part of seeing if you can take that risk, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, the more factors you have against you, the harder it is. It doesn't mean you shouldn't take it. Mm -hmm. It's just you have to, uh, sorry, I'll fluff one up there. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to like measure, measure mm -hmm. like for you, if this is the risk that you want to take at this time mm -hmm. or under these circumstances or in this environment or. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Speaking of taking a risk at a certain time, um, you know, I think a lot of women feel that um, starting a family is a threat to their career advancement and their professional development. Mm. So, you know, there's so many unknowns already with marriage and with having a child and there's risks coming at you from everywhere. There's personal risk, financial risk, health risk. Yeah. Um, so women are forced to constantly ask themselves, like, can I afford to take a maternity leave? Yeah. Or will I, you know, still be up for that promotion? Or will a new firm take me on even though I have a young child at home? Yeah. So I think that's a risk that women are mitigating every day by asking themselves the question, you know, when or is there a right time? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's such a hard one. And I mean, like, I think I'm getting to that stage where I'm starting to think about that a little bit more. Like when I was in my 20s, I don't think I was as worried about it. And no, oh, there's plenty of time for that. But, you know, women, we truly have a biological clock. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we should be sh ashamed or shamed because we think about something that is like biologically needed, important, um, and and um, essential to us as women. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, some of these conversations are shaming towards women That's for right. wanting to, to want to have a child is, can sometimes be perceived or as to want a to negative have a career thing. rather than a family too. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's both sides of the coin. So ah, uh, it's that's a tough one. And, and like you said, like when when can you take a maternity leave and it be the right time? Mm -hmm. You know, and when are you in that environment where you have support? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's such a tough one. And uh, like I'll jump in and say I, I recently I went to a f fertility clinic because I'm you know getting up there and I'm like, am I getting up there? Do I still have time? Do I need to worry about this? Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to know, the great thing about the day and age that we live in is there's information available to us. Um, I think I paid $100 for a test that was like for my egg count. Um, not proper language, I'm sure, that I'm using here. But um, anyways, it, 
you know, I, I did get a, a, a good response back and they said, you know, my levels are healthy. So, but had I got a different response, that would have made me think about maybe the next two, three, five years differently. Whereas mm -hmm. now I'm like, okay, I, I have time to make different decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not in that rush, which, mm -hmm. you know, um, I've, I've got some goals. I've got some things I want to accomplish mm -hmm. if I can pick a timeline. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not quite there yet, but it's like, when is the right time? Yeah. And then you hear about, sorry, not to go on a monologue, but hear about all these like side effects to women that have, have kids. And then like, you know, a after you have your baby, like, it's not like, okay, it's all blissful. Then the real work starts, mm -hmm. you know, and that mat leave isn't, well, it isn't a vacation, but I know you've got a story here, Sarah, and you got to yeah. share it. <laughs> well, not to mention, you know, I know we talked about, you know, the risks in terms of health and stress and, and you know, balancing a career and, and motherhood, mm -hmm. you know, is, is extremely challenging. Um, but I think, go to just to go back to the shaming, like, I, I think p women also worry about how they'll be perceived at yeah. work and, and how, you know, um, you know, their, their bosses or, you know, people in management um, will perceive them. And I think, you know, I'm thinking back to a story of a woman I used to work with and um, she was just having her second child. And, you know, part of the protocol is you go up to HR and you let them know you're having a child. And so she went up to HR and the gentleman said to her, um, oh, you're going to have another year vacation. And so just, just mm -hmm. it's interesting how people perceive that and perceive motherhood and, and women who are working and, and you know, who also want to start a family and have a family life. It's, it's a challenge to, to balance both of those things. And, yeah. and the shaming doesn't help. No, no. And I mean, not to get, we could do a whole episode on, yeah. on all this kind of <laughs> stuff. But like at least in Canada, we, you know, we have fairly decent like maternity leave. But it's like, you know, women's bodies are put through all kinds of stress. There's a lot of side effects, which I won't get into. But women who have had kids, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and I'm hearing about it from my girlfriends who are. It's a massive recovery. You're healing while mm -hmm. like nourishing uh, or nurturing a, a, a new a new human. So yeah. you also then will have conflicting priorities. So mm -hmm. at one time when I would have been able to uh, work right from you know 8 a.m. all the way to 9 p.m., that might not be a possibility in terms of childcare, uh, whether or not whether or not I have a partner who will be able to pitch in. Like these are difficult things to consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. About how well, then you got to where you're gonna get mommy tracked. Right? That's so right. In the workplace. That's a huge concern. So, I mean, we're kind of rabbit holing now, but um, uh, there's there's some great research too that um, uh, Professor uh, McMaster did talking about um, how the differences between work weeks between men and women and how t technically due to her research, it's they were working the same amount of time, but women were more accountable to where they were. So it looked like they were working less, like they would own up to when they were picking their kids up from daycare, mm -hmm. whereas the men would just do it and they just wouldn't report in those those yes. details. So in fact, they're still working the same, but moms got mommy tracked because the, you know they were overly honest or I'm not mm -hmm. really sure what the the outcome is to kind of save that. But yeah, definitely definitely a massive uh, risk for women uh, specifically to, to think about um, mm -hmm. when, when you're thinking about your careers. So not sure if you guys had, um, any any uh, stories you want to share about maybe a time that you didn't take a risk and you might have regretted it? Mm. I don't know if you've got any of those because that's a big fear of mine is to um, leave something on the table, something that yeah. maybe was important to me that I wanted to go for. I mean, I, I've definitely done that and I didn't go for it. Yeah. And I, I hate that feeling like, mm -hmm. like you failed yourself, you were too ashamed, embarrassed, whatever, or afraid of other people's opinions that you might not even, like you don't even care about these people. Yeah. Like as Kelly Keen said in her interview, like, who cares? Like who cares what these other folks uh, right. think? But yet we're so affected by the opinions of people that we don't even know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Well, for like I found at the beginning of my job now, I manage a member organization. Um, I, I was less likely to take risks on big decisions within the, you know, the workings of the governance or the policy mm -hmm. or procedures that would go on within the office. Um, so, for example, if there was a few events that, you know, just weren't doing well and there was a lot of pushback from the members to continue them and I didn't take that risk. I continued to do them. We continued to lose money and then eventually I said, you know, we need to sunset this and I think that, you know, that was a risk that I should have taken a lot earlier mm -hmm. um, and it's something, it's, I learned a lot, a lot along the way in that process, but that's an example of an everyday type of situation that comes up where you know, you might be scared to do yeah. something or feel like you're going to get judged or the, feel the backlash from your colleagues or your employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think that's actually something that continues to happen at any level. Um, yes. The ability to put your hand up um, in a meeting, like not physically, like actually, but in, in theory, like put your hand up, say an idea, give an opinion. Um, it is a risk every time you raise your voice and, uh, and, and speak. So 
Because if that's risk, a small thing, a but it's not to as well. Though. Well, exactly, yeah. because exactly. it's, it's what, what do you leave on the table because it's mm -hmm. a missed opportunity, right, um, to present yourself or your ideas. Mm -hmm. um, something else that Kelly talked about mm -hmm. is surrounding yourself by supportive people. Mm -hmm. Just wondering if you guys have any thoughts on that or if you, know, you have sort of a strategy or people you regularly meet with, check in with, especially when you're contemplating some of these more serious decisions. Mm -hmm. I, well, I find, you know, I'm very fortunate to have parents who are very supportive and they're a good sounding board uh, to run mm. things by, but they also give me the freedom to make mistakes and learn from those as well. Yeah. I often find, too, on the other hand, that sometimes, you know, if you're not surrounding yourself with the right type of people like Kelly was talking about, that can hold you back. Yeah. So you just have to be careful and you have to uh, trust your gut and really trust your instincts with, you know, whose advice to follow. Mm -hmm. Is there any... any Final thoughts on that? And yeah, I, I think I think just surrounding yourself with people who are like-minded is mm -hmm. is you know really validating and and you know helps you grow and you 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 help each other grow. Um, so you know my close friends, we all are pretty similar and like-minded and and you know we're all. Um, you know, moving forwards and forward in our lives. And so, you know, when you're on the same page as people, it helps you to feel supported and validated in, in sort of what you're doing. It kind of gives you that confidence to take those risks, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, making sure you have that support network. I also think mentors are so, so important, yeah. whether they're personal or professional mentors. Um, yeah, very important to have in your life. Awesome. Thank you so much, ladies, for coming, for sharing, for being vulnerable. Um, appreciate it. And I hope uh, everyone who is watching uh, learned something. So thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Christine. Thank you.